I know that the new year is often filled with desires to detox, be healthy, lose that weight. Last year I started this journey, I was 25 pounds heavier than I am now. I thought that I could never give up Mexican food, Italian food, burgers, pizza, I love it all. But you know what I love more? I love muscle definition. I'm like, wow, I was able to get some definition in my arms. I was able to discover my waistline again. That this, I don't have to even suck in anymore. Those things, turns out, feel better to me than that moment of indulgence. And it turns out after that moment, I actually don't feel all that great. So I am learning to shift what I think I want with what I actually want. So this morning I gave myself, as you can see, it's a really dreary day here. The haze was beautiful. I watched this haze roll in from the mountains over the land. I couldn't even see barely out this window and it was fascinating. So instead of getting up and hustling and crushing it, I decided to just ease into the day. For a girl who knows how to grind and hustle, I didn't get here without a little grind and hustle. It was hard for me to actually sit still and recognize all things will get done. I've got to add some garlic to this. So I realized that I could allow a shift from grind and hustle to happen and to enjoy peace and know I'll still get my workout in, I'll still film my video, I'll still promote the classes and opportunities to learn together in community this year. Like those things will still get done. It's gonna be all right. So I don't have to be quite as high strung and stressed as maybe I thought I did. That's a shift, right? A thought shift. I've gotta grind and hustle. Turns out these younger generations have it right. They're like, you don't have to grind and hustle. You can just achieve. And so my concussion earlier this year taught me about peaceful productivity. And turns out I enjoyed sitting and watching nature so much that I didn't want to get up and get going. Truth be told, I have only washed my face today. I put on my workout clothes, like ready to hit it. It's a new year, baby. And I better turn off this music because it'll tune out of YouTube. Alexa, stop. As much as I love some good old 80s music to pump me up, that will get me uh, copyright infringements, unfortunately. So I basically sat enjoying shifting from, I need to get up and being hard on myself and being critical of why am I not feeling like moving to making those excuses of, well, it's technically a national holiday. I mean, I could take the day off, everybody else is, to learning that I can get it all done. I can do it all. I can make healthy meals, I can get my workout in, I can nourish my mind with meditation. It just doesn't have to be this hustle on a schedule. I have that to-do list, it's a day off. I do have a schedule on other days, but today's a day off. So those are the days I struggle with the most. So shift number one, give myself time to relax. Shift number two was I, I relaxed a little too much and honestly did not want to work out. But I thought, you know what? If I allow myself to do what I think I want to do, just sit on my booty and relax, then three o'clock will roll around and I'll feel like garbage. Right, this is short-term and long-term thinking. Daniel Kahneman calls it thinking fast and thinking slow. I'm here in my kitchen because this is gonna be demoed starting tomorrow, so I'm really excited to film in this space that is not gonna be here for long so that you can see the fun transformation of a shift in real life. So I learned to shift from that fast thinking of, I just wanna sit here which is often our subconscious thought of desire to relax, desire to detach. Instead, I had to take the, what Daniel calls slow thinking, slowing it down and thinking, actually, I wanna feel good at three o'clock. I wanna be energized. I wanna be proud of how I've spent the day. So I got up, I talked on the phone for a bit, I read, I enjoyed thoroughly watching this haze come in and retreat. I gave myself that, that self-indulgence that forms a, a, like a self-love almost of listening to what I actually need instead of running through the agenda of hurry and hustle. 
And what I realized as I let go of the hurry and hustle, hurry and hustle leads me to the end of the day, wanting to sit and have a glass of wine or a beer and veg out. That's not a life I'm proud of. So I got up, I gave myself that grace to veg out first instead of after exhaustion and then hopped on my Peloton. One ride led to two, two led to three, maybe four. I can't remember how many I did. I just kept picking things that were fun. I let it be fun. How about that for a shift, right? From what I have to do to what would bring me most joy? 80s ride, hardcore ride with Alex, hardcore ride with Robin, fun ride with Christine. So I hit like all my favorite instructors rides and then I was feeling pretty energized. Then Gigi came in with the ducks into the house. I'm not even really a fan of dirt. Truth be told, I don't really want animals in my house or in my life because they're messy and they're expensive, but love has brought them into my life, right? And I live now in this space because of the love I have for my daughter. So again, lots of shifts, right? Like we're just constantly shifts. We don't have to be perfect. We can let go of perfection and be people of progress. We can let go of comparison and turn inward and say, what would bring me joy in this moment? And what would really bring me joy, right? Because it turns out box chocolates don't bring me joy. The wine doesn't bring me joy. Those things bring me inflammation and cause my body harm. And um, many of you know, I haven't been, uh, I've known that in this cancer journey, I need support. And so I have been open about it and I'm learning how to shift from being Miss Independent who can do it all, Don't, no one's gonna let me down again, I'll just take matters into my own hands, right? When men have failed you, that's what you learn how to do as a woman. And so I had to make another shift and learn how to ask for help and it's been beautiful. So I did my rides and now I'm hungry. So what do I think I want? I think I want chips and salsa. I think I want, and luckily I've learned a lot of healthy swaps. So when I want Mexican food, I now saute up kale, onions, zucchini, mushrooms, tomatoes, and green chilies and garlic. And I create that flavor using very healthy things. Sometimes I'll even top, uh, top it with a few um, crumbled tortilla chips just to get that little bit of crunch that I want. Well, right now, because I've spent so much time growing in my health. And I conquered the holidays without sugar, baby. That's progress, right? I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm not asking you to be like me. I'm not asking you to compare yourself to anybody, let's be clear. I want you to look at yourself, what would bring you the most joy truly, and then take one step in that direction and allow one step to become two, allow two to become three. And then next thing you know, you'll have this build of habits that help you succeed. It's hard to do it alone. That's why I've created the Warrior Women Society for us to come together. It's not just for women, but one of the things that I know, I like to study the trends that'll put you on a path to success in the future. And one of those trends is compassion, collaboration. Think about who you buy from. You buy from people you know, you love, you trust, you admire, you respect. Women build those relationships in beautiful ways. And so there's a large body of research that's actually been done in Fortune uh, 500 ballrooms in countries all across the world, composing over 60% of the GDP. And they're showing that these trends of femininity are the trends of the future. So that's why I called it Warrior Women Society. You might be a warrior woman, you might be a male, you might be a female, you might just identify as female, or maybe you're crushing on a female. So whatever the case may be i invite you to join me in that space and hope that you will use this as a year to nourish yourself nourish your body i'm going to be making a detoxifying cucumber soup i'll post the recipe with this video and not because i like oh actually not cucumber that's on the agenda for tomorrow i found two recipes that i'm exploring this during this holiday break and um the celery one, truth be told, I actually can't stand celery. But celery, if you Google what are the healing benefits of celery, you will find that it is amazing. It is great for your blood pressure and nourishing your body all over, right? You need your blood flowing to energize your body. It reduces inflammation, right? There's a lot of toxins in our environments and reducing inflammation means 
Inflammation is your, simply your body saying, you did something wrong. You put some poison in, and now I gotta work hard to get it out. So let's quit poisoning our bodies. Let's do things that reduce inflammation. So that's a shift that I'm making happen as I embrace this journey ahead and conquer and kick cancer's ass because I am not gonna let that bring me down, baby. It's a new year. I got a message from a friend that said, I know this is a really tough time and I can't imagine all that you're going through. And I was like, this ain't my first rodeo, friends. I've been through some hard stuff before. I've lived in my car and now I live here, right? There's a big shift. I have endured divorce, which was very, very, very difficult. We wrote our own vows. I thought we'd be together forever. We made these promises. I later got pregnant out of wedlock, talk about some judgment. And every one of these hardships has turned out to be grand. It was a great experience to have to take matters into my own hands and take ownership of my life and to learn no one's job is to support me, that's my job. And it was also really, when I look at all these challenges, they all brought strength leaving a toxic marriage. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I was still with that man. So I'm grateful. I got a beautiful baby girl who I love more than life, who her love of horses taught me I could do more. At the time that she wanted to ride, I was broke as a joke as an educator. We don't pay our teachers enough. It's a shame. It's a disgrace. But I wanted to do better. I really wanted her. I thought, here I am telling all these kids that the future is their oyster, right? The world's your oyster, the future is yours. And I have to turn around to my own child and tell her we can't afford to do that. No, thank you. I decided that wasn't gonna be the reality that I taught my kid. And thanks to her and her love of horses, I started to rise. I started to do little things that then led to big things. And that's my hope for you. I wanna take you on this journey with me, whether you're here, because you're overcoming some challenge and you need to make a shift. Could be a health challenge. It might be that you need to increase your income and you wanna get better at how to do that. You wanna be a better leader, you wanna grow your career, you wanna take some risks. Maybe you're in a toxic relationship that you wanna get out of. Maybe you just wanna be a little healthier. Vibrant energy doesn't describe you and you wonder, how could I be better at that? How can I have the life, whatever dream it is that's inside of you? I'm a dreamer, baby. I opened my dissertation with the words, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I love dreaming, but most important, we have to execute on that dream. So as I've helped people vision board before at the beginning of the year, I've realized a vision board ain't enough. You need support, you need people around you who give you hope, who give you new knowledge, who keep you running course. And I hope to be that for you. If this speaks to you, I hope to see you at our Tuesday noon training tomorrow. I hope that you will join Warrior Women Society and say, you know what, I can find a way to fund my success. I've been broke as a joke as an educator and invested in my own learning year after year after year, and it has built me up. So let's quit spending our money in ways that do not uplift us and start investing in education. I know it changed the trajectory of my family's life through my mother and watching her, and that's why I became passionate about teaching And now my goal is I've reached this level. I want to share that knowledge with others. And so if that speaks to you, I hope to see you Wednesdays for Warrior Wednesday, where we learn how to cultivate the traits of the future. With that, I'm going to get back to making this celery soup, and I hope it turns out delicious. May a shift happen in your life this year that brings you in the direction of your dreams. With love.